Chapter 57 Spiritualism The doctrine of natural immortality has prepared the way for modern spiritualism. If the dead are admitted to the presence of God and holy angels, and privileged with knowledge far exceeding what they before possessed, why should they not return to the earth to enlighten and instruct the living? How can those who believe in man's consciousness in death reject what comes to them as divine light communicated by glorified spirits? Here is a channel regarded as sacred through which Satan works for the accomplishment of his purposes. The fallen angels who do his bidding appear as messengers from the spirit world. While professing to bring the living into communication with the dead, Satan exercises his bewitching influence upon their minds. He has power even to bring before men the appearance of their departed friends. The counterfeit is perfect. The familiar look, the words, the tone are reproduced with marvelous distinctness. Many are comforted with the assurance that their loved ones are enjoying the bliss of heaven, and without suspicion of danger they give ear to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When they have been led to believe that the dead actually return to communicate with them, Satan causes those to appear who went into the grave unprepared. They claim to be happy in heaven, and even to occupy exalted positions there, and thus the error is widely taught that no difference is made between the righteous and the wicked. The pretended visitants from the world of spirits sometimes utter cautions and warnings which prove to be correct. Then as confidence is gained, they present doctrines which directly undermine faith in the Scriptures. With an appearance of deep interest in the well-being of their friends on earth, they insinuate the most dangerous errors. The fact that they state some truths and are able at times to foretell future events gives to their statements an appearance of reliability, and their false teachings are accepted by the multitudes as readily and believed as implicitly as if they were the most sacred truths of the Bible. The law of God is set aside, the spirit of grace despised, the blood of the covenant counted an unholy thing. The spirits deny the divinity of Christ and place even the Creator on a level with themselves. Thus, under a new disguise, the great rebel still carries forward his warfare against God, begun in heaven and for nearly six thousand years continued upon the earth. Many endeavor to account for spiritual manifestations by attributing them wholly to fraud and sleight of hand on the part of the medium. While it is true that the results of trickery have often been palmed off as genuine manifestations, there have been also marked exhibitions of supernatural power. The mysterious rapping with which modern spiritualism began was not the result of human trickery or cunning, but the direct work of evil angels, who thus introduced one of the most successful of soul-destroying delusions. Many will be ensnared through the belief that spiritualism is a merely human imposture, when brought face to face with manifestations which they can but regard as supernatural, they will be deceived and will be led to accept them as the great power of God. These persons overlook the testimony of the scriptures concerning the wonders wrought by Satan and his agents. It was by satanic aid that Pharaoh's magicians were enabled to counterfeit the work of God. The Apostle John, describing the miracle-working power that will be manifested in the last days, declares, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. Revelation 13, verses 13 and 14. No mere impostures are here brought to view. Men are deceived by the miracles which Satan's agents have power to do, not which they pretend to do. Witchcraft in Modern Form The very name of witchcraft is now held in contempt. The claim that men can hold intercourse with evil spirits is regarded as a fable of the Dark Ages. But spiritualism, which numbers its converts by hundreds of thousands, yea, by millions, which has made its way into scientific circles, 
which has invaded churches and has found favor in legislative bodies and even in the courts of kings, this mammoth deception is but a revival in a new disguise of the witchcraft condemned and prohibited of old. Satan beguiles men now as he beguiled Eve in Eden, by exciting a desire to obtain forbidden knowledge. You shall be as gods, he declares, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, verse 5. But the wisdom which spiritualism imparts is that described by the Apostle James, which descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. James 3, verse 15. The Prince of Darkness has a masterly mind, and he skillfully adapts his temptations to men of every variety of condition and culture. He works with all deceivableness of unrighteousness to gain control of the children of men, but he can accomplish his object only as they voluntarily yield to his temptations. Those who place themselves in his power by indulging their evil traits of character little realize where their course will end. The tempter accomplishes their ruin and then employs them to ruin others. None need be deceived. But none need be deceived by the lying claims of spiritualism. God has given the world sufficient light to enable them to discover the snare. If there were no other evidence, it should be enough for the Christian that the spirits make no difference between righteousness and sin, between the noblest and purest of the apostles of Christ and the most corrupt of the servants of Satan. By representing the basest of men as in heaven and highly exalted there, Satan virtually declares to the world, no matter how wicked you are, no matter whether you believe or disbelieve God in the Bible, live as you please, Heaven is your home. Moreover, the apostles, as personated by these lying spirits, are made to contradict what they wrote at the dictation of the Holy Spirit when on earth. They deny the divine origin of the Bible, and thus tear away the foundation of the Christian's hope, and put out the light that reveals the way to heaven. Satan is making the world believe that the Bible is a mere fiction, or at least a book suited to the infancy of the race but now to be lightly regarded or cast aside as obsolete. And to take the place of the word of God, he holds out spiritual manifestations. Here is a channel wholly under his control. By this means he can make the world believe what he will. The book that is to judge him and his followers he puts into the shade, just where he wants it. The Savior of the world he makes to be no more than a common man, and as the Roman guard that watched the tomb of Jesus spread the lying report which the priests and elders put into their mouths to disprove his resurrection, so do the believers in spiritual manifestations try to make it appear that there is nothing miraculous in the circumstances of our Savior's life. After thus seeking to put Jesus in the background, they call attention to their own miracles, declaring that these far exceed the works of Christ. Says the prophet Isaiah, When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isaiah 8, verses 19 and 20. If men had been willing to receive the truth so plainly stated in the Scriptures, that the dead know not anything, they would see in the claims and manifestations of spiritualism the working of Satan with power and signs and lying wonders. But rather than yield the liberty so agreeable to the carnal heart and renounce the sins which they love, the multitudes close their eyes to the light and walk straight on regardless of warnings, while Satan weaves his snares about them, and they become his prey. Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, therefore God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10 and 11. Those who oppose the teachings of spiritualism are assailing not men alone, but Satan and his angels. They have entered upon a contest against principalities and powers and wicked spirits in high places. 
Satan will not yield one inch of ground except as he is driven back by the power of heavenly messengers. The people of God should be able to meet him, as did our Savior, with the words, It is written. Satan can quote scripture now as in the days of Christ, and he will pervert its teachings to sustain his delusions. But the plain statements of the Bible will furnish weapons powerful in every conflict. Those who would stand in the time of peril must understand the testimony of the scriptures concerning the nature of man and the state of the dead. For in the near future many will be confronted by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appeal to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything, and that they who thus appear are the spirits of devils. Long has Satan been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. The foundation of his work was laid by the assurance given to Eve in Eden, You shall not surely die. In the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5. Little by little he has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs, but it will be reached in the last remnant of time, and the world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. They are fast being lulled into a fatal security, to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God.